In this video, we're going to be talking about what to look for when buying a side-by-side -side or even an ATV. It's really kind of the same principle. It doesn't matter. Today, I have a bunch of side-by-sides here lined up. Uh, we're going to go over some of this stuff, and I'm going to talk to you about what to look for and possibly even why you want to get a side-by-side -side or an ATV. First of all, that's a question you got to ask yourself is why do you want one and can you tow it? Do you have a place to store it? Uh, about the maintenance, there's a lot of maintenance on these vehicles. Uh, and also, if you don't have a reputable dealer in your area and you have to travel to a dealer, or if you have a certain brand ATV or side-by-side -side and you don't have a dealer close to you, what are you going to do for maintenance? Um, so you kind of have to decide if you're going to be the one to working on it uh, or if you're going to have somebody else work on it. There's a lot that goes into that uh, service maintenance, just uh, basically taking care of your machine. And around here, our uh, service shops are about five weeks out. So if you look at, you know, if you break something on your side-by-side -side or ATV and you can't fix it and you have to take it to your local shop uh, five weeks out, you know, that's, you know, before you know it, they get to it and then they find out they have to order parts. You might be looking at six, seven weeks and really, you know, that's part of your summer or part of your fall or whenever you might want to use your side-by-side -side or your ATV. Some people want to use them for sports. Some people want to use them for work. Some people want to use them for work and trail riding uh, but we're going to go over some of these vehicles and we're going to show you some things to look for uh, whenever it comes to buying a used side-by-side -side or an ATV. All right, y'all, here we have a pretty good lineup of what you might be considering. This one, of course, is a Razor Pro XP, and it is a turbo, and it is off the charts. You really have to know what you're doing to get a machine like this. This thing is fast. I'm talking you really almost have to have this out in the dunes to capitalize on all the power that you have here. But what I want to show you is on this machine, uh, when you're out there and you're looking at different things, uh, even ads, you know people are going to say oh yeah low miles hardly ridden slightly used you're going to get all kind of stories it's just like buying cars and that's what you really have to go into this looking as it as like buying a car when you go to buy a car you can look at it and tell kind of if it's been beat unless they've kind of detailed it put new tires on it uh, you just never know what the history of the vehicle has been like so for this one this vehicle was uh on loan to a media outlet. Uh, you can see here the radiator is just packed full of mud. Uh, everything about this vehicle has just been used hard. You look at the shocks, you can see, you know, it's just got some, uh, it's got some wear and tear. And also if you look up inside, you'll see this bird's nest here. You'll see there's a bunch of string and and all kind of stuff up in there and then also if you look inside of it the mirror is busted off a lot of wear and tear on this vehicle and believe it or not this vehicle only had 166 miles when polaris dropped it off to us this was a vehicle that they were kind of getting to us to use for our rentals we will uh, not be renting out this vehicle number one because it's been beat and number two because it is way too fast and you see here this uh the trailing arm has been smashed from underneath and it's pulled out up top so this thing has had a hard 166 miles on it then we look at this ranger over here this ranger we've had since brand new um, this ranger is a 2020 uh, the razor pro xp is a 2021 this one here is knocking on 8,000 miles. We have not had any problems with it whatsoever. It still has the original belt. We just do preventative maintenance on it. As you can see on the windshield, we have get ready for return because this vehicle is getting returned to Polaris. And this is something you might want to look at if you're looking at something for more work trail oriented. Uh, believe it or not, this thing runs really well. I mean, this thing, it it just amazes me how well this thing runs. I mean, you've got your your work standard and performance mode, and it's uh, got turf mode, and it is just a phenomenal unit. Then you come over here and you look at this unit. This is more of a sporty four seat. This is what you would consider a sportier uh, four seat unit for a family that doesn't really want a dump bed and uh that's kind of like once you get into this you know you're you're going to start to see some differences uh, things you got to look at whenever you're buying a uh, side by side atv um use new whatever it is you notice how short and choppy these seats are so if you're a bigger person 
you know, your legs are going to hang out over that seat and it's not going to be the most comfortable. This uh, vehicle has definitely got some pep to it. This is not a turbo. This is a Razor uh, XP1004, so it's a four-seater. These are brand new. This has about uh, maybe 180 miles on it. We just got it the other day. But as you can see, you cannot judge a book by its cover because this thing is pretty dirty. And uh, it's only been out on our tours a couple times. So uh, you just got to kind of take how the vehicles look sometime with a grain of salt. Sometimes people don't wash them they don't clean them but really they're good vehicles underneath all the dirt and the crud and then sometimes you have some like the razor over here that was sent to us just like that that is exactly how it came off the truck uh, it is definitely dirty cruddy and trashed so what you got to do is you got to start looking at uh, like your CV boots you know make sure your CV boots aren't torn your axles it's it's a lot like a vehicle if you start seeing wear and tear and things bent and busted and you want to look underneath the vehicle you want to check the oil you want to kind of check the steering if there's massive play in the steering if there's any clunking banging maybe a broke axle or something busted in the front end uh, your sway bars you know all that kind of stuff you want to look at you know all this you know here's your sway bar in the front you want to look at all your links and your components and you just want to make sure everything looks good if you don't know much about vehicles side by sides or mechanics in general you might want to take somebody with you to check out an atv or side by side especially if it's a used one this vehicle right here is a polaris general and it's a 2021 and this is more of a sport utility uh, four seater you know this one here is all sport and this one here is kind of sport utility you have uh, same deal full doors you have a dump bed and you got a rack on the back um, this one here is a, it's kind of more for work and play you can throw you know wood in the back you can put a pretty good load back there but uh, you just want to start checking the vehicle out all over and making sure it doesn't have any you know kind of scars or abrasions you know that kind of thing like it was laid over but if you start to see a lot of different things on these vehicles that look like it was beat chances are it's been beat or it's been swamped you know you just got to really kind of break it down and start looking all over it and and see what you're getting into um, now this vehicle here is more of a sport utility two-seater from yamaha uh, same deal two seat uh, has a dump bed uh, these vehicles you're looking at you know 100 horsepower you know razor pro xp you're getting up into 200 horsepower uh, so it really depends how much power you want what kind of vehicle you want what are you going to do with it uh, what's your price range your budget uh, are you going to be able to fix it yourself are you going to have somebody else fix it for you there's a lot of things that you got to take into consideration whenever it comes to buying uh, ATV or side by side. I will tell you this whenever it comes to buying an ATV or side by side whether it's brand new or used no matter what it is sometimes you can be influenced by your friends your family and they're gonna try and push you in a certain direction until you need something uh, and maybe you don't maybe you don't need a sporty vehicle maybe you don't need a utility oriented vehicle maybe you don't need a Honda or a Kawasaki or a Polaris uh, I would strongly encourage you to go out and demo or test drive a lot of vehicles right now it's really difficult with covid because it's hard to get vehicles a lot of dealers don't have them you got to put your name on a waiting list so you almost have to know what you're going after before you even put your name on the waiting list or get there to buy something but i would i would say that you should probably go to some off-road events a lot of times they have demo rides i know yamaha does kawasaki polaris do your homework do your research and figure out what vehicle is best for you and if you know how to work on things uh, you're going to talk to your friends and family and relatives and they're going to tell you, oh yeah, you want to get this. Well, it may not be the best machine for you. It may not be what you're looking for. Ergonomically, it may not fit right, ride right. Um, there's a lot of things to consider when buying a used ATV or side-by-side -side, or even a new ATV or side-by-side. -side. So just check them out just like a vehicle. You want to know going into it, how many miles does it have? How many hours is on the engine? What's the oil like? What's, you know, just look over everything just like you would if you were buying a car. Like I said, if you don't know what you're doing, 
you should probably take someone with you that does know what they're doing because you can get burnt really quick. It could be something electrical, it could be a, a CDI, it could be a rec reg, it could be something like that. And of course, Rick's Motorsport Electrics has all that stuff. They're the best in the biz. Uh, that's who we call for all of our electrical stuff. So if you have anything electrical, those are the guys you want to get a hold of. And if you do have electrical issues, you're going to want to get an owner's manual for your vehicle, not the one that comes with it. You're going to want to get something like a climber or something like that that has all the details in and all the uh, numbers so that you can run them when you're checking electrics uh, so definitely get that because that's going to help you in the long run because there's a lot of things that you might want to do with this vehicle maintenance wise that you don't want to take it to the dealer if you have uh, your vehicle let's say a lot of times the vehicles with a brand new uh, first time service you take it to the dealer it's about 450 bucks to get the oil and diff fluid changed and some of the other service things they do it's really not a ton uh, that they do but it's uh, it's pretty expensive so you know there's some things you might want to do on your own save some money and uh, know that you're doing it right well there you go y'all i hope that helps you out with uh, some ideas on buying a new or used atv or side by side just know what you're going after do your homework don't do an impulse buy that's the worst thing you can do in an off-road vehicle if you all got any questions feel free to hit me up fishers off-road we're on all the social media outlets we'll see you guys take care have a good one